we then have this images directory. We have three input images that we're going to perform face detection in, and we'll see some of the limitations and drawbacks of hard cascades along the way. So if I pop open PyCharm, you'll see that I have the project directory structure already loaded up. And let's learn how we can perform face detection in single images. We start off with our imports, arg parse for command line parsing, imutils for resizing an input image, and then cv2 for our open cv bindings. We then specify a command line argument image, which is the path to one of our input images, which will be one of these images here over in the images directory. This is the image that we want to perform face detection in. We then have the cascade command line argument, which points to this XML file. This is the standard default face detector in the OpenCV library. So here we just specify the path to that file. And I've defaulted it to this string, which is the name of this file over here. So as long as you don't move this XML file or this Python script, you won't have to supply the, the command line argument. It's already default set for you. A call to cv2.cascade classifier loads our input har cascade from disk, resulting in this detector object. We then load our input image from disk, and we resize it to have a width of 500 pixels, and then convert it to grayscale. When you perform har cascade detection, you're typically working with grayscale images. Now, to actually detect objects in an input image, you need to detect multi-scale function of the detector object. And here you supply a number of arguments. The first is the input image you want to detect the object in. The scale factor controls your image pyramid scale. So you can adjust this value to create more layers of the image pyramid or less layers. Now there is a trade-off effect here. If you think back to what we've, we've covered with for say uh, template matching, then you know the more image pyramid layers you, you construct, the more likely you are to find all the objects in the input image at varying scales. Because if I put my face close up to the camera, my face appears larger. And if I go all the way back here, my face appears smaller. So we'll need to create multiple layers of this image pyramid because we want to apply the same fixed size face detector to multiple scales. So the more layers of the image pyramid you construct, the more likely you'll be able to detect all the objects. The downside is the more layers of the image pyramid you construct, the slower your face detection or har cascade detection procedure is going to take. It's going to take longer because there's more layers to process. The more layers to process, the more data there is. So the algorithm by nature takes longer. You want to tune this value because you want to balance speed and accuracy here. And hard cascades are pretty notorious for, for false positive detect, uh, detections as well. So this scale factor and this min neighbors value are going to be the two values you tune the most. But for a starting point, I typically recommend you start with a scale factor of 1.05. The min neighbors value is often used to reduce false positive detections. Because as we've learned, if you've, if you've gone through the uh, basics of object detection lessons, then you know that the closer an object gets during a sliding window to a face, the, that detector is going to light up. It's going to get excited. That, the eyes of the detector are going to be like, oh, this looks like an object. It looks like an object. Yep, this is definitely an object. There's going to be higher score, higher probability within that region. So if we see that there are a, a number of face detections grouped very, very, very close to together, those are considered neighbors. That's a good thing. It means our har cascade thinks it's very likely we have found a region of an input image that contains a face. And then the other parameter we provide here is the minimum size of an object. So this says that if an object is less than 30 by 30 pixels, just discard it. It's likely a false positive detection. It's likely noise. Get rid of it. 30 by 30 is a, is a good starting point. Um, you also want to tune this value if you find that you're getting a lot of very small detections. You can tune this to get rid of them. And this flags here, the cv2.cascade uh, scale image, this is something that you don't want to tune. This is a value that you'll typically not even touch, but needs to be provided to the detect multi-scale function. 
I go into more detail on the scale factor and the min neighbors values and how to tune them in the text version of this of this guide. So make sure you go through those in detail, give you a deeper understanding of what the detect multi-scale function is doing. Finally, the output result of detect multi-scale is a set of bounding boxes. It's a list of four values containing the x starting x coordinate, starting y coordinate, the width of the bounding box, and the height of the bounding box. And we'll display the number of faces detected, which is the length of this rectangle's list. And for each bounding, for each of these bounding boxes, we're going to draw the bounding box rectangle on the output image and then display it to our screen. So let's see what this code looks like in action. I'm going to copy and paste the usage over here to my terminal. I'm going to execute the script. And as you can see, move the terminal over here. We have one face detected, which is in fact my face right here. Let's try another image. Now it's saying that two faces were detected. What's up with that? My face was correctly detected here, but then you get this, this weird false positive detection down on the bottom. Why did that happen? Well, as I've already mentioned to you, hard cascades are notorious for false positive detections. And when that happens, you need a way to filter them out. And the two values that you typically tune when that happens are your scale factor and your min neighbors. I typically recommend starting with your min neighbors because if you can increase this value and keep the positive detections and get rid of the negative detections, you'll have essentially solved the problem because min neighbors is a great control of false positive detections. If there are not enough neighbors in the detection region, then you know it's a false positive detection. So as an example of how to tune this value, if I increase my min neighbors from five to seven and then rerun this script, you'll see that my face is detected, but that false positive detection down here has been removed. It's been eliminated because it did not have a minimum of seven neighbors in that local region. And then let's look at one final example where multiple faces, multiple legit faces are an input image. And here you can see both faces of the football slash soccer players have been correctly detected. So hard cascades are, are really fast. They were a state-of-the-art algorithm back in the early 2000s, and they are capable of running in real time, especially on your modern-day laptops and desktops and on your resource-constrained devices and your embedded devices like the Raspberry Pi. They can also run in real time as well. So let's look at how we can implement hard cascade face detection in real time. I'm gonna open up this Python script and let's start with our imports. We have the video stream import from the IMUtils library, arg parse for command line arguments, IMUtils for resizing our image. We'll use the time package to insert a small sleep call to allow our camera sensor to warm up. And we have CV2 for our OpenCV bindings. Our argument parsing only consists of this har cascade. It's the path to our pre-trained har cascade face detector residing on disk. And just like we loaded it from disk in our static image face detection example, we have to load this har cascade from disk right here so we can perform it in real time video. We then access our video stream and allow the camera sensor to warm up. And from there, we start a while loop. And inside this loop, we read the next frame, we resize it and convert it to grayscale. From there, we perform face detection just like we would in normal static images we loop over the bounding box rectangle and draw each of the detected faces on the frame. We'll sh show the output frame to our disk, and if the Q key is pressed, then we'll break from our loop, and then we'll close all open windows created by OpenCV, and then stop our video stream. So I'm going to grab the usage here, paste it into my terminal, run the script, and once the script starts, I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see my face. You can see that Face detection is running in real time without a problem. And my computer is obviously doing more than just running face detection. It's also recording the video associated with the screencast. The problem is though, you're seeing we're getting a little bit of false positive detections. Like over, over in the corner a few seconds ago, you saw a false positive detection. And then for some reason, OpenCV sometimes thinks hands could be a face region, potentially just due to the contrast level between my, my white skin and the darker background. And that brings up another point. 
if you're going to train your own custom object detector, you need to be considerate of unconscious biases that are inserted into your data set. This is especially true in something that's happened a lot in face recognition is you'll see these pre-trained face detectors that are trained predominantly on fair-skinned people, such as white people or Caucasian people. But obviously, the world is not just limited to white people. There are tons and tons of different ethnicities, and those models need to be trained and incorporated, and we need data for each of those ethnicities as well. So what happens as computer vision and deep learning practitioners is we sometimes get blind spots to this type of data. We get so focused on the task that we're not considerate about the ethical considerations as well. So if you're working with your own, training your own custom object detectors, you know, keep that in mind, especially when you start digging into ethnicities and, and gender. That's a very touchy subject. You need to be hyper, hyper considered about it. And honestly, it's something that I should write a tutorial about here on Pi Image Search. It's a great, important topic. But I'm getting a little off topic here, sort of went down a bit of a tangent there. It's, it's something that I wanted to discuss in particular in terms of face detection. And as we get into face recognition algorithms, that you may start to see those biases and data sets, and you may have already read articles about them. So keep in mind data set bias in deep learning and uh, specifically in, in facial tasks that are based on skin color or gender. It's a hot topic. It's something that needs to be discussed. But as you see, as I've discussed all of this, face detector has been running in real time without an issue, but we've seen those false positive detections. Those false positive detections, coupled with the fact that you, you have to tune the scale factor and min neighbors and occasionally the min size value of hard cascades, are one of the reasons why we don't use it as often. The accuracy, those false positive detections are just a real pain in the butt with hard cascades. So actually what we end up using are um, hog and linear SVM object detectors. They are a more advanced version of HAR cascades. You know, still based on the idea of constructing an image pyramid and, and a sliding window, they're more accurate, but at the cost of speed, they run, they run slower. Deep learning-based face detectors, on the other hand, can be either you know, very fast or less accurate or very slow and more accurate. We're starting to get more of a balance here, especially with optimized hardware. But what you'll find with deep learning face detectors is that you're going to get far, far higher accuracy. So you see these false positive detections. They don't typically happen as much with deep learning face detectors. And as I rotate my head, you'll see that the hard cascade starts to fail. I'll move my head up and down and I'll lose the detection occasionally. Deep learning based face detectors are far more robust in that regard. They work quite well. We'll dig into those later in the series. You'll learn about OpenCV's pre trained deep learning face detector, far more accurate than hard cascades and requires only a little bit more code to implement. So, if you're on a laptop or a desktop machine, I really recommend using OpenCV's deep learning face detector. It's going to be far more accurate. But if you're on a resource constrained device like the Raspberry Pi, you might want to cons consider sticking with hard cascades because the Raspberry Pi and that family of architectures just isn't going to be fast enough to run the deep learning based face detectors in real time. That said, there are acceleration hardware for embedded devices. The Raspberry Pi, for example, you could use the Google Coral USB accelerator. You could use the Movidius NCS. That gives the Raspberry Pi an additional boost, and it pushes the computation of those expensive neural networks to that USB device and then allows them to run in real time. So there's no doubt if you want pure accuracy with very minimal hyperparameter tuning, go look at your deep learning based face detectors. They're going to be more accurate. They're going to be more robust. You're going to have a better time with them unless you're really, really, really concerned about speed. If you just need speed and throughput and can tolerate some false positive detections, then hard cascades are the way to go. So with that said, I want you to download the code to this post. I want you to learn how to tune the scale factor and the min neighbors parameters. which are really, really important for you to learn how, how to tune and get used to them. And also explore your own images. Take note that these parameters, these scale factor and min neighbors parameters, they're not going to be the same for every input image. You might have to tune them a little bit. We'll discuss OpenCV's deep learning based face detector later in the series. that will give you a more accurate face detector. And I'm also going to come back and I'm going to discuss Dlib's hog and linear SVM face detector 
not as accurate as the deep learning based face detector, but more accurate than the Har Cascade. And of course, we'll look at DLib's deep learning face detector as well. So go ahead, download the code, play with a notebook with this guide. It'll be a great learning experience for you. And I'll see you next time.